Hi everyone and welcome. This video podcast is brought to you by Explorer. Explorer was founded with a mission to give children a safe onboarding to the digital life and a better balance between screen time and physical activity. My name is Tim Kirkback. I'm father of four, founder and CEO of Explora. In today's episode, we will have with us Dr. Rosanne Kibana Hodge, a leader in children's mental health, and Paula Radcliffe, three times London Marathon winner and three time New York Marathon winner. Wow. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you. So excited to be here and have this conversation. Super. So, Today, we will be talking about kids and activity and the benefits of exercising on a regular basis while the kids are still young. And I wonder, how is it to talk about or talk to children versus talking to adults about exercise and being active? And Dr. Kebana Hodge, I know you have many years of experience on how to talk to, uh, to children and to motivate them. And what's your thoughts on that? You know, kids learn from their parents by watching. So one of the best ways to motivate kids is to really start with fun family activities. And I really want to emphasize fun because in a time when everyone is stressed, there's so many ways to do these really active, engaged activities that are fun for us too. And when kids feel that fun and get moving, that's something that's going to stick in their brain in what we call our subconscious. And it's something that they're going to want to not only do now, but it's going to lay that foundation for a love of lifelong activities. You know, I know at our house, um, we do all kinds of activities from swimming to dancing. You know, we have a disco ball in our basement and we get moving on a regular basis. And we always just try to laugh and really be engaged. Children naturally want to move they thrive and they uh, flourish on that movement and on being able to run around and without realizing it they're already in the early years habit forming they already mirror what they see their parents doing from pretty much before they can walk but certainly as soon as they can walk and a child doesn't really do it for a health benefit or to help them achieve well at school. Although they might see those benefits, they do it because it's fun and they do it because they want to do it. And that's why I think it's really important that we encourage our children to try every different type of sport and find the one, find the one that really makes them feel alive, that they love doing and that they have that passion for, because that's what's going to encourage them to keep doing it and to set down those healthy habits. For a lot of children without the support of their parents uh, and of the wider social structures in the school and the sports clubs, it's going to be hard to, to get them back to the level of fitness that they were at before. And that's why it's really important that that journey back is one of rediscovering fun as well as rediscovering the physical activity fitness levels. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and let's actually just follow up some additionally on that, because if you talk about the COVID situation and how it's now it's extra important to get back back on track or, or to get back into activity again and, and everything you just mentioned, uh, Paula, maybe you have some some additional advice, a couple of good tricks on how parents can can help the kids back on track again when everything is reopening, a couple of good good tips? Um, well, I think we, we already addressed some of those in, in terms of making it fun and making it a family activity. I think um, that when the whole family acknowledges that, okay, we're going to get back into this together and we're going to have fun doing so, and we're going to um, mix it up a bit, make make games out of it, make it a, a lot of fun, let the children pick the activity and take it in turns picking the activity. Uh, and don't be afraid as parents to allow them to pick an activity that we're really not good at, to allow them to, to kind of get the upper hand uh, uh, and to win in, in that respect, because I think that healthy competitiveness is healthy for the children as well. So don't let them win, but don't be afraid to let them pick a sport where they're certainly going to, to beat us at, because that's important for them and important for that journey back. And, and by doing it together, they see, okay, this isn't just something I have to do on my own. This is something we're doing as a family. And it's actually quality time. 
as a family, which is something that I think a lot of families today are trying to achieve. And um, we tried it with the Families on Track initiative that I've been building up where the families just come along to the event and complete 10K as a family by running different loops of 250 meters, 500 meters and 1000 meters. And it's fun, it's not timed, it's not a race, but it's just getting the family doing something as a team because team work builds team spirit as well and, and helps everybody get that sense of achievement. And again, bottom line, make it enjoyable. Yeah, I can relate to that, having four boys as well. The best way for me <laughs> to get them involved is actually to challenge them and, and be the one that is joining. And uh, like you said, it's not only them, but actually we as parents need to be involved as well. And uh, you also mentioned a little bit about gaming, but if you look into also a little bit more about gamification, uh, what's your thoughts on that? What I really enjoy about gamification, it's meeting kids where they're at. You know, this is a place where we're using technology and that really is the language of kids right now. And instead of saying technology is all bad, let's optimize it. Let's help kids to utilize that in a way that's going to help them. And so what, when we gamify things, kids are more likely to be motivated, motivated, at least at that point. And, you know, when I think about exercise and really getting kids back into this routine, you know, there's some things that are really important, you know, there's all kinds of exercise and team sports is one, but there's a whole other world. And we have to think about our kids age their developmental level, which is not their age, it's what their abilities are, right? Because some kids have abilities where they're amazing on a sports team and other kids don't have that ability or interest, right? So we have to look at some people do better on more individual sports, right? Like um, swimming, um, other karate, and then other people are on a team. And it doesn't really matter what you do. You just need to be physically active. And we need to give our kids opportunities to be active. And so that gamification part, kind of what it really does is it cuts down on some of this friction that's happening. Because as we've taken away sports, parents are really sort of really befuddled at what to do to get their kids active. And as you know, Paul and I and, and Sten, what we talked about is it starts with families, right? And we have many families of many different ages. I have a school age kid and a teenager. And sometimes finding those activities that we can do as a family may feel like a challenge. And when we gamify it, we can encourage our kids without us being there and provide that motivation um, to do whatever activity that is appealing to them. And I think that's just so important for kids to find things that are lifelong activities. Uh, and I completely agree. Um, I think that technology, like it or not, is a huge part of children's worlds now. Um, I think I'm probably not alone as a parent in almost using that as a bargaining chip. So if you do a certain amount of physical activity, you get more screen time. And gamification, I guess, is another step on from that. And like it or not, kids are naturally competitive and it's good for them. Life is competitive. They need to learn how to challenge, channel and um, focus that competitive spirit in order to be able to achieve at life and, and succeed. And I think what gamification does is just I guess, make that clearer to them and talk to them on their levels. And it's one of the reasons why I love the Explorer Watch because my son will regularly go out, come straight back in. And first thing he's doing is comparing his step counter and seeing if he can have beaten me. Never mind that he's been running laps of the school playground while I've been out doing actual runs. The, the points pretty much add up to, to the same thing. And he can see that accumulation of fitness in a very physical, clear way on my screen, he can see his points going up and up and up. And he knows that he's at that gold level uh, of fitness in comparison to his peers as well. And I think that that competition, when it's not being used in a way to put down others, but to bring everybody up together. That's a, that's a very nice thing you mentioned, Paula. And I think one of the messages that both me personally and as a company we have received is that after we started our Go Play uh, services where we make it possible for kids to be incentivized and move more and compete. 
we have had messages from parents saying that, you know, we have tried all types of, of, of ways to get kids to either walk to school or even walk to their football practice, etc. And once they could start to compete with their friends uh, and win and, and, and compete in general, suddenly they actually ask to be allowed to walk to school or to their uh, training instead of, of, uh, of having a ride. Is there any other way you guys see that that parent can help kids to develop a healthy exercise habit outside those three topics we have have discussed? So, you know, I, I'm, I'm a psychologist. I teach everybody about their brain and their body. And I believe that you can even teach toddlers about their brain and body. And so when we talk about developing healthy exercise habits and healthy habits in general, whether that's nutrition or how we manage stress and exercise being one piece of this lifestyle, when we educate kids about the effects of exercise in their body, kids love to understand what is going on. It empowers them. It gives them control. And especially in a time in this pandemic, when kids don't feel a sense of control, when everything's been taken away from them, school, their, their beautiful sports, um, being able to see their friends, giving them small opportunities and big opportunities to really be independent and really gain control, including how they're controlling what they put in their mouth and how they control their bodies is really a confidence and self-esteem builder. And that's what I love about Explora. And, and I love Paula talking about how it's competitive, right? Because we you got to have fun. And sometimes being competitive can be so fun in a family. And so you can, even within your own family, you know, really create this healthy competition to get kids motivated and excited about, you know, being active. There's so many feel good components uh, to moving that happens in the brain and body when, when we actually do it. It's about leading by example. Um, and what we as parents need to do is not just talk about it, not just say to the kids, you need to get active, actually show them, get out there and, and do it with them when they're younger and respect that as they get older, they may then want as a teenager to go off and do their sport on their own terms, in their own time, but they will have learned by then that it brings positive things with it. Um, fun things that we do with our kids during lockdown um, when we were doing a lot of homeschooling was we, the first thing that the kids did was club together to get themselves a trampoline um, with their pocket money and just to be able to promise that carrot okay we do an hour of work and then you can go out you can run around the garden you can bounce on the trampoline you can burn off some of that energy and teaching them how the academic side and the physical side can go hand in hand so my son has to learn a lot of poems at school and quickly he learned that if he ran at the same time as learning his poem, then he could learn it much more quickly and it would stay with him longer. Do you see that there are some, some similarities or, or some good behavior that if they are taught to be active in a good positive way when they were small, it's something they bring along through the rest of their life as well? Absolutely. I mean, I think it's, it's like anything that we do. The good things that our parents showed us are the things that we want to, to pass on to our children and that hopefully my children will want to pass on to, to their children uh, and that will stay with everyone. That doesn't mean that if you weren't active as, as a young child, you can't learn active habits um, and see the benefits of it later in life. You absolutely can. Um, but I do think it's, it's maybe slightly easier um, for someone that has been born into an active family and has grown up around that. Um, I honestly think it probably took my children a while to work out that everybody's parents didn't run around a track for a living um, <laughs> because it, it just seemed normal to them and they were running around from the moment they could move. But I do think that most children are like that and it's probably later in childhood that if you're going to drop out of those exercise habits, that happens. And that's why I think the message that Explorer is pushing out is going out to children and to their parents, because it has to be everybody invested in this together, everybody seeing the benefits and laying down those benefits for, for future generations. Dr. Rosan, anything you will add to that as well that you have experienced or seen? 
Yeah. So, you know, let's talk about some of the research about what happens when kids are active, because I love for parents to see how when we create time that we put an investment into healthy lifestyle changes, no matter what age you're at, there's going to be a positive outcome for it. So when we just even talk about what happens in the brain when we exercise. We've increased oxygen in our brain, our frontal lobes, which are the job manager of the brain. They tell every area what to do. Um, They help us to be more attentive, to make long-term planning goals. Those areas work better. We have increased neurotransmitters, and then we actually change specific regions of the brain with activity. The cool part about, you know, what happens in exercise is that literally we found this through research, one 30 minute um, moderate level of activity, doing 30 minutes of moderate activity increases cognitive performance one time right? Um, Some other amazing stats. I do a lot of work with special needs kids and special needs kids are increasing across the globe here in the United States. 54.2% of kids in America have a physical or a mental health problem. So this is on the rise for a lot of reasons, but three moderate levels of activities uh, a week decreases attention problems by 40%. And overall, what do we find with kids in general who exercise? They have better grades. They have better attendance. Their cognitive and memory function on formalized tests are better. And they have better academic behaviors in general. I mean, that's pretty incredible. Incredible. When you regularly exercise, that's what can change for your kid. And, and you know, if kids are, have better memory, better attention, better behavior, they're going to get a lot more out of their learning. And we know that when your kid is a better learner, that that means they're more likely to do post-secondary education and training, which is going to help them to be, you know, successful adults, right? And we as parents, our whole goal is to have independent happy and healthy kids. And so that's the power of exercise. And, you know, why can't we benefit with that too, by doing it with our kids, which is what I love. Paula, what what were some of the surprises you saw or have experienced during the pandemic? Um, I think there were, there were several surprises, but some pleasant surprises uh, and a great surprise that I got was that kids went back to that old pleasure that I remember growing up of actually just playing out with friends. Um, The environment was safe outside, the roads weren't anywhere near as busy and they quickly worked out with homeschooling that if they got all of that done in the morning, they could meet up and play in the afternoon. So just go off on bikes, on scooters, go build a den. And I think as a parent, for me to see that that hadn't disappeared because it kind of felt like that was the olden days. And that's what I'd love doing as a child, but it didn't happen in today's world. So to see that come back and at the same time have the reassurance of being able to, to grab my phone, track where my son's walk was and see and contact him when he needed to come back to eat. Um, I found that really, really refreshing. And I feel like they benefited from that as well. Uh, Being away from screens, being with their friends and being outside in the nature kind of built a new appreciation um, of that, that maybe they hadn't had time to to stop and appreciate before. Uh, And so I think that was one of the, the really big benefits for me. For me, I think one of the absolute silver linings of this pandemic is a recalibration. And it's a family recalibration. People are deciding that their family's physical and mental health has to be a priority because they were just under such extraordinary stress. And they really realized, wait a second, you know, I have a lot of control over what happens to me even if the world feels out of control and, you know, parents are the CEO of their child's physical and mental health. And, you know, we have a certain amount of time to cultivate these amazing human beings. And they realized, wait a second, physical and mental health starts with getting active. It starts with what kind of food we put into our bodies. How are we fueling our kids' brains? And I think people really, 
you know, uh, adopted these incredible activities they started doing. I've never seen more people outside (laughs) in my neighborhood. I've never seen people biking on the street in the same way. And it's continuing as people, as the world is sort of reopening, people are staying really physically active because it feels good not just for your body, but for your brain. It's so important in helping us to regulate the nervous system. And I just think that people have now said, this is an important priority for myself and my family, and they're doing it. So that is definitely a big silver lining of this pandemic. That brings us to the close for this episode. Uh, Thank you so much for being here. As a founder of Explora, I want to encourage both you and your family to really get out and discover more. And... um, there's so much fun we can do while moving. So we believe our smartwatches for kids can help to unlock that. Uh, if you would like to learn more, please visit myexplorer.com. If you already have our product, you can download our app and, um, and join our Go Play platform as well to compete. Uh, until next time, there's a big world out there. So let's go out and discover it.